Hey guys, what is going on? It is RC Knockout and I am back with another video. Now if you are new to my channel, my name is Nolan. In today's video, we have got another set of upgrades for the cheapest Traxxas Stampede project. I believe the most recent upgrade we did was actually the Brussels system. So if you missed out on that video, I will go ahead and put a card in the corner. So feel free to check it out. But we put a Horizon Hobby product in. This is actually from the brand Onyx. So the brand is called Onyx RC, but the parent company, as you can see, is Horizon Hobby. Uh, this only came in at $79.99 for this power system. I will go ahead and leave it linked down below. And so far, I've had a lot of fun with it. This thing is super fast. I also went ahead and did a speed test. Feel free to check that out. I will also leave a card for that in the corner. Uh, it comes with an EC3 connector, uh, soldered on. And this is a 70 amp brushless ESC. Comes with a 4000 kV I believe it's a four pole brushless motor. This thing is so fast on 3S. I've yet to be able to bash it on 3S because I need a taller battery strap and a lift for this um, a lift for this platform the ESC sits on. So then we can fit a three cell pack under here. But the plan is to actually bash this thing on 3S. So far, all I've done is I've done a speed test on 3S because we we're able to kind of strap the 3S pack in there. But if I'm actually going to bash this thing and jump it, we need the taller strap and the taller platform. So stay tuned for that video because I'm super excited to test this thing on 3S and actually bash it. Uh, the other upgrade we have so far, I did put an aftermarket uh, Metal Gear servo in because the plastic one went out. Uh, we put on the Hot Racing Servo Saver. Uh, this is a medium duty one in blue. It is aluminum. And also I put these Proline Badland MX-28 tires mounted up on uh, Traxxas Max wheels on. I also had to use some Amazon 17 millimeter wheel hex adapters uh, so we could adapt this from a 12 millimeter hex over to a 17 millimeter. And these look super awesome. Let me know what you think of these wheels and tires. I think they look super cool on this machine. So this is going to bring me to the reveal of what the upgrades are for today's video. Uh, a couple of videos ago, we actually had the drive shaft fall apart. Uh, I, I got it Frankenstein back together and it held in the last video. But since these are just a stock plastic drive shafts, I think these are not going to hold up much longer with the brushless power. So that's going to lead into what one of the upgrades is for today. We are going to be upgrading to some different drive shafts. I bought these right here. Now I got these for just under 30 bucks. I will go ahead and leave them linked down below. I got them off of Amazon. They are heavy-duty hardened steel, and they came from the same manufacturer, at least from the same distributor, as the Traxxas Slash 4x4 drive shafts I'd been running for quite a few years. Uh, so those were really good drive shafts, so I have high expectations for these ones. I don't think we'll have any issue with these drive shafts. Like I said, I will leave them linked down below. Came in just under 30 bucks. So that's what we're going to be installing. But also while we're working on that, we have had one breakage in the last video. Uh, it's kind of hobbled. You might be able to see in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the lighting right, but there's a ginormous crack in the hub carrier right there. Yeah, you can see it right there. That hub carrier has a pretty decent sized crack in it. It's barely holding together. So since we're back there anyway, we're going to be replacing the hub carriers. I decided to just go with some RPM ones. RPM makes good quality, flexible plastics. Uh, I think these came in around 10 bucks. I'll also leave these linked down below. But these work on the Bandit, the Slash, and the Stampede two-wheel drive. Oh, and the Rustler. So that's the other upgrade we're going to be doing. And on top of that, we're going to be ditching the bushings. So at the wheel bearings, or rather than wheel bearings, I should say, this has brass bushings in there. And we're going to be replacing the bushings. I bought this right here from the brand Winter Evening. I will go ahead and leave it linked down below. I think this is just the wheel bearings. Uh, so this is going to replace all of the brass bushings in the hub carriers for actual wheel bearings. And I have one more upgrade that I wasn't even planning on putting on. We're going to be installing these right here on the front. This was actually an upgrade I was going to use on my cheapest tracks to slash project. But in the end, since they also fit on the Stampede two-wheel drive, I decided we're going to put these blue anodized Traxxas uh, steering carriers on the front of this. Because uh, I couldn't find the RPM ones in black for a good price. And since I already had this sitting around, I'm like, you know what? Rather than me put these on the Traxxas slash two-wheel drive... Uh, I think I have RPM ones on the slash two-wheel drive, or the slash two-wheel drive ones are fine either way. Or maybe I have some aluminum ones on the slash two-wheel drive, but either way, I th thought since I have these sitting around, and as you can see here, they work on the Rustler, they work on the Stampede, the Bandit. It doesn't say they work on the slash, but I'm pretty sure I bought these for my slash. But either way, we're going to put them on the Stampede. Uh, these were not super cheap. Anything aluminum, especially from the brand Traxxas, is 
kind of expensive, but if I can find these, I'll leave these linked down below as well. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. We're gonna start with the back. We're gonna start by replacing the rear hub carriers, replacing these uh, drive shafts, then we'll move on to the front. We won't need all of the bearings in here because these hub carriers right here come with bearings. So we'll have a few extra in here, but uh, let me go ahead and resituate the camera and we're gonna jump right in this installation. All right guys, so the easiest way to take the wheels off rather than taking the 17 millimeter nut off, it's easier just to take off this eight millimeter right here. So I've got my eight mil. Let's go ahead and get that loosened up. Wrong direction. All right, this comes out like this and then that comes off. So then you don't even have to remove the 17 millimeter nut. I found that to be the easiest way to do it. So then it just leaves a 17 millimeter hex adapter right in there. I can set these two things aside. Well, I need to elevate this right here. Make sure we're all within frame. Okay, now in order to get the drive shaft off, there is a one and a half mil right down in here. Now, unfortunately, the last video I filmed, I lost my MIP one and a half mil. So I looked all around for it. I think it fell underneath some leaves because I was walking around with it in my pocket because I had some uh, grub screws that I was worried were going to come loose when I was running RC, lost it at the park. So now we are just working with this one and a half mil right here. So get our one and a half mil and loosen up that grub screw. Come on. There we go. So that's what we're going to start with doing. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the hub carrier. I do apologize if my fingers are in the way. Hard to keep them out of the way. I'll probably just do the one side because the other side's going to be the exact same process. Doesn't make sense to show both on camera. Come on. There we go. All right, guys, got the grub pin out. And then the drive shaft will just go loose like that. And now oh, I forgot. The stampede has these dumb Phillips head all over the place. Alrighty, I'm back, found a Phillips head. So let's go ahead, get this bottom screw undone. I do not like Phillips head, I really don't. This is probably not the proper size Phillips head, that might be part of the issue, but still. Oddly enough, I don't carry one around. All right, unscrew that, pull the pin out like such. And then the other one on the front is also a Phillips head. So go ahead. Ah, this one's in there tight. Jeez, I don't want to strip this. Is it coming? I am very, very surprised thus far with how hard I've bassed this thing. These plastic turnbuckles or uh, plastic links have not broken because they seem pretty weak, but I have jumped this thing like crazy and they have yet to break. So that's surprising. Okay. Got it. Don't want to lose this little shim. Also don't want to use lose a little shoulder screw. Now we can go ahead, grab the rear hub carrier. And we need to go ahead, pop the hex off right here. Got my flathead screwdriver. Probably would have been easier to do this on the truck, but uh, just go ahead, get that back behind the wheel hex and pop the wheel hex off, which will then expose the pin. Push the pin through and then there's a shim. Pull the shim aside, and here's what we're going to be replacing also. See how the Traxxas Stampede has got brass bushings. And since the hub carrier on the other side is already pretty much cracked, that's the reason why we're replacing this to begin with. So uh, let's grab the new one out. All right, here's the new one from RPM. Let's see which one's left, which one's right. Does not matter? I don't think it says which one's left and which one's right, so they must be... Must be the same on both sides, but here's the original stock one right here, and here is the new one, and we're going to go ahead and open up this winter evening uh, bearing kit. I believe it's just the wheel bearings, and grab some bearings out that should fit. Yeah, just the wheel bearings in here. They're all the same size. Grab two of these out. So go ahead Get the bearings pushed in, 
Now I'll go ahead and grab out the brand new drive shafts right here. I don't know exactly what the brand is for these. Um, the one thing I am going to make sure, I'm going to make sure these are tight right here because these are the ones you could potentially lose. These grub screws right here have a way of coming loose. So I might actually even want to put a dab of red thread lock in there because you don't want these uh, joints coming apart uh, or these grub screws backing out. So I'll do that real quick and then we'll go ahead and install the drive shaft. All right, I've got the grub screws on the joints tightened up. So let's go ahead and let's install the new drive shaft. So first, just go ahead, put the stub axle through the rear hub carrier like that. And then I'm actually gonna lift up the camera so you guys can see a little bit better. We're gonna go ahead, put the hub carrier on. So I think we're just gonna put in the lower hole because as you can see, there's two sets of holes. I think it was probably in the lower hole on the original hub carriers. I don't know, we'll put in the lower one and see where that puts us. So go ahead, push this. Let's see, there we go. Push this pin through. And then tighten it up with our Phillips head. All right, that's in. And then we retain our grub pin right here. Didn't come with a new one. And then we go ahead, thread that in, and get that tightened down. I will go ahead, get a dab of thread lock on this, because this is screwing directly into metal on the new drive shaft. Get our blue thread lock. Put a dab of th blue thread lock on it. That was a little bit more than a dab. Grab my one and a half mil. And let's get that threaded in. Up and close so you guys can see what I'm doing. I got that grub screw tightened in. So now all we have to do is get this top link tightened back down. So we need to grab our shoulder screw as well as our little shim right here. So shoulder screw is going to go through here like this. And we'll put the shim on the back side like that. And then that's going to screw right into the new RPM hub carrier which hopefully we can get this, these threads started. Come on. Yeah, I'm just not a big fan of Phillips head. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way, but I kind of have to put pressure on the back side of this so it continues to thread in. Right, and that is tight. Uh, so now what we have to do is put the shim right up against the bearing, like this. Then grab our pin right here. Put the pin through the hole in the stub axle. It's taking a little bit of persuasion, isn't it? All right. I'll do a little bit of persuasion with some pliers and then uh, we'll get the hex put back on. There we go. Got that pushed through. Now we just have to get the wheel hex pushed back on. Come on. This can be kind of difficult to persuade this on. Oh, that wasn't that bad. All right, and you'll know because it'll actually click in place. Now that's on, I can go ahead, throw this wheel on, and uh, I'll do the other side off camera, and then we'll move on to the front because we're gonna go ahead, replace the front hub carriers with these aluminum ones from Traxxas. Go ahead, give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it so far, guys. Alrighty, guys, I am back, and I have got the back finished. We got both the new drive shafts on, got the hub carriers on, got it all tidied up. So it is time to go ahead, move on to the front and replace the front hub carriers with these, uh, well, I guess these would technically be steering carriers, replace the front steering carriers with these aluminum ones from Traxxas. By the way, if you're wondering the part number, part number is 3636A. So uh, let's go ahead and let's get the wheel off. I'll just do one side. I'll do the other side off camera. 
And once again, just like taking off the rear wheel, the easiest way to take this off is just take off the eight mil rather than the 17 millimeter wheel nut. So much easier. Uh, can I get this off by hand? It's difficult. There we go, got it. All right, and this is what we're replacing, just this piece right here. I could replace this. I've thought about this. I might buy the RPM ones of these or the aluminum ones of this. Um, I don't know if this is called the caster block or what this piece right here is called. Oh, also I was going to show you, here's the side that crack right here on the back. I didn't show this one on camera, but as you can see, it is cracked. Uh, one more bash and this would have been done. So let's see, how do I even... Okay, so it looks like this has these little clips. I don't really, not a big fan of these clips, but it looks like it's the clips that actually hold this piece on. So the easiest way to get to this piece is going to be, looks like removing the Phillips head that's right here. So I'll go ahead and undo that right there. So then we can get to the clip because there's a clip right there you can barely see. So I want to make it where you guys can actually see it. I really do not like Phillips head screws. They're so difficult to get out. Doesn't help having the wrong size screwdriver. All right, get that out. And here is that little shim. All right, so it's gonna be easiest probably to just use, maybe using a needle nose is gonna be easiest. I'm gonna turn this so you guys can see it a little better. Heck, it might be easiest just to get these out. Okay, let me show this one. This one's going to be easier to show you guys because it's on the back side. So what I'm going to try to do is lift up the camera. And I'm going to try to catch it. I'm just going to try to push on both sides. Okay, it's coming off. All right, it's starting to come off. It's almost off. Come on. off partially anyway okay there it flew off and here it is right there set that aside and we probably just have to do the one side because we can just push it out through the top part so i believe i can just go ahead and push this through yes we should be able to push it through the top grab it with a needle nose right here like such there we go got that out so you only have to undo one of the clips looks like the bottom clips the easiest one to get to then this whole carrier will come out like that and then we just have a of course another phillips head and a little uh, nut right here which we should be able to use this uh this little wheel wrench right here yeah and this will actually undo it i don't even have to hold that that's much easier than having to deal with the phillips head all right, that came off there. Simple as that, guys. Now we are going to use our flathead screwdriver to go ahead and pry the wheel hex off. There we go, exposing that pin. Pull the pin out, push the stub axle through. And there's a little shim right there. And just like the other uh, rear one, this does not have wheel bearings but there are wheel bearings that come with the new front steering carriers. So let's go ahead, let's get this out. I don't see a label left and right on these, so I think they're pretty sure they're universal. I totally forgot, I do actually have to get this out and put it on the new hub carrier. So let's go ahead, undo that. So now that I got this unthreaded, we just need to thread this into the new hub carrier or steering carrier because this has got threads in it. I'm not gonna worry about using thread lock uh, considering there's going to be a nut backing this. Otherwise, I normally would. So we're just gonna go ahead and thread this in. It looks like both of these are identical. So they're the same on both sides. There's no left and right specification on either. Did I put this in the right way? Crap, I put this, I needed to put it from the opposite side. So now from this side, okay, so we're gonna put it in from the bottom like this. All right, we got that on. Go ahead, get the bearings put in. 
So we can go ahead, push the stub axle through just like that. And uh, go ahead, put this little shim right there, then push the pin through like that. And then put the wheel hex on. All right, and that's on when it snaps in place. Looks pretty good. And now we can go ahead and do the reverse process. Looks like this pin might have a very slight bend to it too. It's hard to tell on camera, but I think it might have a slight bend, but we're not gonna worry about that. So we're gonna go ahead, put this on, push the pin through. There we go. Yeah, I think there is a bend because if there wasn't a bend, it would slide in there easily. It's not sliding in very easily. Come on. Starting to go. Here we go. That's most of the way down. All right. And now go ahead, flip it over, and we'll get the one put on the back side. Oops, bumped the camera. I do not like these clips. I'm not a big fan of them. Like my HBI Baja has these clips all over it. They're not this small though. I think the slash two wheel drive has it on a few spots as well. Come on. There, it's sitting on there, but it's hard to actually get it where you need it to be. All right, I think that's on there. Make sure one more time that this top one's on. All right, that is on, flip the RC back over. And now all we have to do, now all we have to do is get the steering turnbuckle put back on. So right here, like that. And then our little nut on the back side. And then go ahead and screw that down. All right, that is on. Now the last thing we have to do is thread this shoulder screw along with this shim back in place. Then this side will be done. It's as simple as that. I'm not doing the greatest job showing this on camera. I do apologize, but it's not the easiest spot to show either. Get in a spot where you guys can actually see it at such an awkward angle. All right, it is on, and that is complete, guys. That is the new aluminum steering carrier is on. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side off camera. So this will be a good place to wrap up the video if you did enjoy it. Go ahead, hit that thumbs up button. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell uh, so you'll be notified when I do come out with new videos. Next video, we'll be testing uh, the new drive shafts. Um, and uh, stay tuned because there's going to be more upgrades coming as well. So once again, thanks for watching. See you later.